Ehas Club presents Stories to Create Podcast, where the tale of our guest takes you back, way back to where the story first got created. Now, to help create this new story, here is your host, Cornell Bunting. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to another episode of Stories to Create Podcast right here at EAS Club. As you can see, today is a beautiful day, people. We are here with the big bad, you know, some would say a poet that teaches his craft in such a unique way. It's a beautiful thing. We're going to dive into his story today. Ladies and gentlemen, my beautiful listeners, without further ado, Help me welcome Mr. Mark Drew. My brother Cornell. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show, man. It feels good to be here. Like, I don't get out much. You know that. <laughs> I, know. I know that, man. I know that. If Listen, if you go out at a function and you're trying to find market, it's possibly not happening. But if it's something creative, there's a possibility we'll there, see man. you. Yeah, man. It's wild because, you know, over a decade ago, we were always out. And it was this like, is true. I felt like it was a household name, whether we were, I was Mark Drew or I went by the name O.I. as a rapper. Right. And I was this presence. Right. And then if, to me, yeah. you know, people still see me like, oh, and they see me. And I'm like, I'm still somebody. You, you remember me? <laughs> I've been at home just raising kids, <laughs> trying to teach the community. Right. And I don't even think people notice at times. You know? Right, I'm right. trying to keep up. I'm trying to stay relevant online, make a post on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. It is hard, <laughs> it is. So to be on your show, yeah. where you have been, for, this is the fourth season? Yes, sir. I'm like, yes, sir. wow, that's amazing, man. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, man. So what we do with our guests, man, and for the listeners, because, you know, this is a treat to our listeners. We have our, our guests take us back to the early years. We was Mark born, grew up. What, what was that like? And you don't even want to start with that same sad. <laughs> I grew up without a father. In the listen, city. listen, you t- you but, take us where you want to take us. So I'll take you to. I grew up with a grandfather. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll spin it to a positive light, right? Yeah. I grew up with a grandfather in the mm-hmm. city, really in the burbs, in the burbs of Chicago. Chi Town, the North Side Burbs of Chicago, Ooh, Evanston. Evanston. Okay, you know, finding my way mm-hmm. like most young adolescents do. Right, you right, know, two older right. brothers doing their thing, and I dibbled and dabbled. That's my story. I dibbled and dabbled. You know, hip hop kid. You make yeah. a few mistakes here and there. You get involved in some things you shouldn't get involved in, mm-hmm. and you learn. Yeah. And in doing so, your parent or your mom says, yeah, you're going to learn even more by sending your butt down to Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> so by my sophomore year, yeah, I'm now in Chattanooga in yeah. a whole nother biome. Right. It's literally another biome. If you're playing Minecraft, it's like enough from the jungle. They're like, whew. Yeah. You're now in the Antarctic. They're speaking another language. Yeah. Everyone doesn't look like you. Right. You hear the word boy, and you know, and I'm taking it as a racial slur because I'm like, right. hold on a second. Yeah. Because you have this perception of the South. Right. So that's the next phase. Mm-hmm. But it forced me to be me. Right. So I stopped being a follower mm-hmm. when I was taken out of my comfort zone early on in adolescence. Okay. Okay. It put me in this place where, okay, I have to be me. Mm-hmm. I stopped acting a fool and I started doing school. Okay. Okay. I was great at math. Yeah. I had teachers who saw that I was great at math. Right. And they pushed me forward in that position. And that's sort of what put me in the spot where I could then say, hey, I'm going to go to college. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. There was no doubt in my mind. Mm-hmm. My grandfather went to college. There you, you know? go. Which is wild, right? Fought in a segregated military because he didn't work, want to work in coal mines. Right. To get that GI Bill mm-hmm. to go to school for a better life. Right. And here I am, you know, doing that same thing, and nothing really changed. It was making the music, going to college, boom, I'm an engineer now, right? There's not much to say about college. You learn this stuff, you have fun, we'll we'll get drunk, all right. You get out of that, and now what do you do? You got to find that money. Right. So that's what brought me really to Florida, was, hey, I need a job. Right. And they weren't building anything in Chattanooga at the time. Oh, okay. So that's okay. what sent me here. It was the money. Mm. So to get to, to try to sum it all up, 
it's this hard knocks, whatever, not really hard knocks, not really a struggle, but this urban experience. Right. Learning a lot about people, mm -hmm. being taken from that and thrown into the wilderness. Right. To find myself, pretty much. And then going out into Florida. Right. To become a man. So, <laughs> so, be, so before we bring the listeners to Florida, <clears throat> your granddad was in Ch Chattanooga. My grandfather, mm -hmm. he was in Chattanooga. Okay. So originally born in Canton, Ohio. Okay. Moved to uh, Chicago. He's the one who moved the family to Chicago, started that generational thing there. And then it was, uh, again, in my adolescence there that he moved to uh, Chattanooga. Okay. Because okay. I had an uncle who moved. It was a whole family. It was crazy. It was like a exodus, bro. Yeah. Movement <laughs> of our people, you know, because. <laughs> yeah. We stuck together like that. Maybe yeah. that's the most important thing in my childhood yeah. that I should have been describing. Right. On Sundays, we're at grandparents' house, mm -hmm. you know, every mm -hmm. Sunday. Yeah. We had a two flat. You know, they lived upstairs. My aunt and uh, my cousins lived downstairs. We were always there. Yeah. Uh, another uncle, they were right around the corner. When they moved to Chattanooga, that's when grandparents bounced. It wasn't long after that to my aunt my mom. like, we're going too. We're going. There was a summer where I lived with my grandparents okay. in Chattanooga before my mom even came down there. So I was down there for... A summer and yeah. a semester of high school. Okay. Just with my GPs. And it was like, you want to talk about being in the world and learning. Right. That was it, man. That That's why I can say I didn't have a father, but I had a father. That was the greatest man I knew, man. That's it, beautiful. There was so much to learn out there. Yeah. But it was the family. We yeah. It's always stuck together. That is my secret. That's all. Awesome. My secret to success is the family. It's the family. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Now, you say you were, you know, back then when you were running, what kind of rap music was was happening? Who who was relevant? Who was the rappers that was relevant at the time? Chicago? Growing up, you know, I love Common Sense because I was from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Common was amazing. Uh, back in the Tupac Biggie days, you know, I... I, I was an East Coast guy, you know. I loved okay. the, the lyrical bars. I, I felt that some of the other music was a little too harsh, you know. I was right. like, it's gangster rap, you know, because I couldn't relate. I wasn't a gangster. Right, right. right? I, I'm a hip hop. I can relate to some graffiti, some dancing, <laughs> some partying. <laughs> right. But now, when we shoot, nah, rob it, that wasn't my life. Right, right. So I right. really couldn't relate to it. So yeah. honestly, that was not my thing. Yeah. It wasn't until later in life that I could actually sit back and say, okay, this is a story. Right. Someone's story, I can't take that away from them. Right. I learned to appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm a raw cuss records type guy, most deaf, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm most deaf, yeah. Lyrically Eminem. Come on, you gotta yeah, give yeah. Eminem his props. Oh, definitely, dude. definitely. Uh, if you want to go back even further than that, my brothers were playing records by KRS, Rock okay. Kim, yeah. uh, dude, Nas. Oh my goodness. Like yeah. I love these guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like that man. I I was a big Nas fan back. Right. Well, well, that was because Nas really blew up in like the late nineties, isn't it? Dude, ninety four, ninety four, ninety six. Yeah, to me, that's the golden era. It was just amazing. Just, wow, classics. Yeah, yeah. Them oh, boys, wow. yeah. them boys dropped some bangers. They dropped some bangers, man. That was beautiful. So, you know, as a as a young man leaving from Chi Town, going to Chattanooga. Not seeing that there is much happening there as far as, as far as the economy go. You had those conversations with your family like, you know what, I got to make a move. You know, they weren't even family conversations. Mm. It was just a conversation. I had a partner, a college mm -hmm. buddy, Brandon Lacey, mm -hmm. had employment in Florida. Mm. So he was already down there. He had moved down there. He had a job. He's pretty much saying, hey, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was like. A no-brainer. Right, right. I didn't question it. That's yeah. where the job's at. Mama, right. this is what we do. Well, that's what right? we do. And go yeah. get it. Yeah. But that hip-hop thing, I got to touch on the importance of yeah. listening to those artists because, again, being able to hear a story that I can relate to right. is what carried me through mm. because a lot of my life... Yeah. I, I've been in positions yeah. where people couldn't relate to me. Right. And right. I, it was hard for me to relate to them. Again, I'm talking about the suburbs of Chicago. Right. It was like, it was so diverse. Yeah. But as I moved to Chattanooga, I end up in more places where it's less diverse. Mm -hmm. And now I become that singleton, right? And then yeah. I begin this path of 
the only one, right? Mm. Martin Drew, the only one. Yeah. And, and we come from the educated family, they say, right? right. Smart Negroes. Yeah. We're going to send our kids to the best schools. Right, They're not right. really concerned about the demographics of the school right. when you end up in that position. Mm-hmm. And then I choose to what? Take on the path of engineering, right? Right. So I still, I end up in that position. So hip hop becomes my saving grace mm. where I can connect with who I am in my culture, where right. I can use my voice, where I can say the things I want to say. Right, right. Without the backlash of the world. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I love it. It's given me the ability to be here. It's given me the ability to have this conversation with you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hip hop saved my life. That's that's beautiful right there, man. I like that. And just for you, the way you grabbed to that and understood how that was being done at the time, the way it was done. That was pretty dope. Mm-hmm. And your brothers, were they into that as well, or they're in a whole different... Definitely integral, because I wouldn't have been turned on to the music if they weren't playing it early on uh-huh. with the records. Right, and I right. remember being, I don't know how old I was, but actually complaining about it being too loud when they played it in the morning. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that was a blessing, getting yeah. that beat into my soul, yeah, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, man. So you got to Florida, you're liking it once you got here. What what did you think? What was the culture shock like? <laughs> the culture shock for me when I moved here was money. More money than I've ever seen in my life. I'm a fresh graduate, you know, with an engineering degree. I get a job, pretty much bought a house within six months, bought a new car. Let's go. That's I'm like let's I'm making music. Oh, you doing you know, it. I'm out. Let's go. You're doing it out the gate. And it was amazing. Yeah. Wow. Until I was broke. Ooh, we're going we gonna, we gonna to tap into that. We're going to tap into that in a little bit. But you you got in, you started to kind of fit in with the crowd. Like, what, what was the circuit like, you know, as you're, you know, you get in, things is beautiful, you bought a house. So, you know, it all starts, why does everything start online, right? Yeah. So you move to the new area, you start mingling online, and the first place I go as an artist is to the open mics. So I'm okay. going to open mics. I'm going to the poetry nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, somehow I end up in the clubs. You know, I'm not even a club guy, but somehow that you know they're right <laughs> yeah. around the corner. Never been to a club in my life, and you just end up walking into the club and like this is pretty cool too. Have a couple drinks, right? And just a lot to alcohol. You know, you really can't get too deep into it because right. it's not even that great of a story. Mm-hmm. You look back at it, you're like, wow. Yeah, I got wasted. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I did some shows. Did a ton of shows. Mm. Did a ton of shows, whether rapping, singing with the band, strange arrangement. Man, I love my brothers. Mm. But so you were, so you when you came and you got on the circuit, you got in a band. Oh yeah, I met the brothers Van Kirk at Indigo. Mm-hmm. Indigo, it was Be Heard. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Terry Lynn Melody, mm-hmm. dude. That was the first open mic event I went to. I probably had been here maybe a month or so. I found mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Boom. I was there, and a few months I met the brothers, and the rest was history. You know, maybe it took a year or so for us to really click off. Right. But that is wild, man. Wow. It did not take long at all. So anyone who's trying to get out there, you want to be out there, just go out there. Like, just go out there. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Get out there, get on the stage. There's so many venues, so many opportunities now to be seen, to be heard. Right. You know, work on your craft and get there. I'm not just saying go out and you're going to explode because, yeah, I've been working on this craft for decades. Right. Wasn't like I just showed up to Florida and stepped on the stage. Right. But you have to get out there. Yeah. That's where it starts. That that is definitely where it starts. So you, you got out there, you met these guys. It was a cool idea to start a band. Pretty much the brothers had already had a band. There's two of them. You know, you had a drummer. There's three of them. They throw in me as a rapper and a keyboard player. We're rocking and rolling. So I would say I was just an additional piece like Voltron. You just add on the fifth lion. Yeah. So we can go conquer the world. Yeah. And you look back, you never knew who was behind you on any given night. Right. But we rocked out, man. Oh. Did a lot. A lot of, lot of platforms. A lot of venues. You know, from zombie con venues to the 4th of July, all the holidays for Fort Myers, uh, all the Pine Island events, because the brothers are based out of Pine Island. Mm. Uh, you know, the bar circuits from one bar to the next. You know, you play one bar for about three or four months, and you move on to the next bar for three or four months. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my. Talk about some smoky nights. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, wow. Singers, 
Mm -hmm. uh, musicians, protect yourselves. You know, singing in those environments, that will add up after the year. So just watch yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. Yeah, uh, that's beautiful right there, man. So when did you get into teaching? <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, boy. I guess it goes with living that empty life of, yeah, this is fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm partying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm making music. But what am I doing with my life? What, right. Like I was trying to get signed to a deal. Right. I'm just running around being a local artist mm -hmm. with a little local pub. Right. I, I want to do something great. And I've always wanted to do something great. Mm -hmm. And not to discredit my music. Right. But I just didn't think that was it. I didn't think I had it. I, I knew. Yeah. I never put enough into it. Right. Or maybe I knew I didn't want to put more into it. Right. So I had this deep longing for purpose. Mm -hmm. Engineering wasn't it. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on a construction site on a poop plant. Yeah. You know, again, making money, right. working with people. Yeah. Not really. Right. And that's what did it. It was that churn. Yeah. And my daughter. Okay. Shaylin. So all this is going on. And I have my firstborn mm -hmm. coming into life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what? is my purpose, man. I have to work with people. I'm good with my voice. Right. There has to be something more I can do with my voice. Right. And there has to be something more I can do with my intellect. Yeah. So how do I bring this this engineering and this voice thing together? Right. And I swear, man, it was like, it's God. Yeah. How do I get paid to use my voice? <laughs> yeah. And I know I could just jump and pay myself as a motivational speaker right away. Right. So teaching was the path. Yeah. Yeah. Teaching yeah. was it. Wow. You want to talk about scary? Yeah. That's a $20,000 pay cut, bro. Ooh. 20K yeah. right there. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be the provider. Yeah. I'm the man of the house. Yeah. Hey, babe, I'm about to take a 20K pay cut because I'm about to try to save the world. <laughs> you know, my <laughs> ego was destroyed. Yeah. Like, it was. Oh, man. It was a, I'd say it was a dark place, that yeah. transitional time. Mm. But I got through it just because, again, through relationships and family. Right. The community. I remember going to uh, the Lions Den. Stacy. Stacy Williams had the restaurant at the Lions Den. Mm -hmm. And uh, Katrina had the event. Mm -hmm. We do acoustic affairs there. Again, going out, connecting with the people. They supported me through that whole transition while I was not an engineer and right. not a teacher, just right. broke, dreaming, having faith, trying to do this thing. Right. Oh, and I remember getting that cake. Yeah. When I announced that I got the teacher position. From the community. Right. So I tell I tell people I'm ordained by the community yeah. to wow. teach these children. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. 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 How detail oriented you needed to be to step into that arena. <laughs> stepping out of I didn't know a thing about teaching, man. <laughs> and I'ma tell people, I tell people every day, it isn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't encourage people just to go into teaching. You have to want to teach. You got to want it. You have to want to teach. You got to want it. And if you don't want to teach, do not be a teacher. Yeah. So I went in not knowing anything. I went in using all that I knew, which was how to love people. I like that. And how to use my voice, mm -hmm. how to use my mind, how to connect, how to perform. Okay. Every day, I, right? It's, the, it's my classroom. Oh yeah, I have a stage now. It's your show, yeah. So you know we're rapping in class. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, we're bringing right. in, we're watching videos in class. We're making it engaging. Mm -hmm. I'm connecting with the kids. I'm a video gamer too, so I love music too. All the things they love, yeah, I love too. Right. So I bring down those walls off the get go. Not to mention, in the back of my mind, yeah, I gave up 20k. Right. I'm about to. Blow this thing out the water. Oh, yeah. When I first walked in that door. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this the way I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what do I have to lose? Right. That's I lose true. this job. Yeah. I'll go back to engineering. <laughs> so, you go back to adding that 20K. I go back to add the 20K. So <laughs> that was always my mentality, man. I'm going to rock, be a rock star teacher. And I say that humbly, but that was my intention. Mm -hmm. Why Why I settle for anything less? Right. Right. I'm going to come here and figure it out. Yeah. So I borrowed from other teachers, and I freestyled that thing. Freestyled yeah. it into a golden apple. Beautiful. You know, and I, and I, 
and it's wild because, yeah, I'm doing amazing things as a teacher. Right. But teaching transformed me. Yeah, yeah. It, it was the people that transformed me. Right, right. Not me transforming the people. Right. And, and I'm blessed. I thank my students. I thank, you know, everyone I've worked with. Right. Not just the teachers and the administrators. Right. But the people yes. I worked with. Yeah. Check yeah. this. When I was an engineer, mm -hmm. I worked with other engineers. Right. I worked with other uh, community development leaders, mm -hmm. permit coordinators, mm -hmm. people in that same arena. Right. You know, right. they're of a certain caliber in society. Right. Some would say a different collar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I can get into the classroom, I'm working with my cafeteria workers. I'm working with my bus drivers. I'm working with my parents. I'm mm -hmm. working with the parents. I'm now working with people in the community. I'm like, this is where it's at. That's and those beautiful. are my favorite people. Yeah. Yeah. You locked in now. Locked in, breaking the barriers. You know, mm -hmm. there is no hierarchy of you have a degree, you don't have a degree. No, we're all people mm -hmm. trying to perform a job, trying to make this system work because we're just like ants. Right. And it breaks my heart to see that division of labor, to see the caste system, to see colorism, see all this stuff still playing out today mm -hmm. when we know we should be working together. Right. You know, and you touch on a, on a, on a huge component right now, and I think... People tread the water lightly right now because they don't necessarily understand how to tap into it fully yet. Why you think we have not figured it out yet of the importance of working together? Fear. Fear, stepping into that unknown. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable working by myself, doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. If I step into your arena, I, I, I might lose what I have. And, and, and I, I say that because why do I not do things? Right. And when I don't do something, it's usually out of fear. Right. So I'm like, why would they not cross that 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 aisle? Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're, they're fearful of something. You can look at politics. You don't even have to say much about it. Why do they people do what they do? Fear. Yeah. They're yeah. voting out of fear. Oh, yeah. this is going to happen to me. This is what the other side's doing. So right. I'm going to be swayed. Yeah. We're voting for comfortability. Yeah. We all yeah. said that we know that Ooh. nothing's going to happen. We said to say, well, I know nothing's going to change. I know nothing ain't going to change. So you just, we just going to vote for whoever makes you more comfortable. Right, right. That guy right. makes you feel more comfortable. This yeah. guy makes me feel more comfortable. Yeah. But neither of us really happy. Right. We just sort of tolerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Man. Man, you guys are hearing this right now? Oh, my goodness. We need to hear that, man. And I, I think we got to tap into that. At some point, we got to step into that arena. Oh, I'm I'm ready. I'm tired of, personally, I've been battling this thing for, I'd say, since COVID. Yeah. Battling this issue that no one's talking about. We're not talking about racism. We're not talking about the division. And when we do talk about it, all we're doing are pointing fingers. Right, right. Everyone's afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's be truthful about it. That's let's true. man up. Yeah, and, it, and it's not a a masculinity thing. It's a human thing. Right, right. It's step up, destroy the ego. Is it Easter right now? Hey, you better destroy that ego so you can rise again. It's the grand metaphor. Yeah, so we can be free. Oh, definitely. And I feel we have to lead by example. Mm -hmm. There's too many of us who see it, not to step out and do something about it. Right. And instead of sitting at home, like I've been doing, right. <laughs> going crazy in my brain, trying to think my way out of it, right. I'm glad to be here to connect with you Yes. so we can work together and create platforms where others can speak out about it and we can find out we're not alone. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness, we really do want the same things. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start working towards it. Yeah. What's preventing us from working towards it? Right. What are you truly afraid of? Right. I like that. So it's those conversation of opening up what are the different fears that we can address and get past them? Get past them. Are they real? Are right. they rational? Right. Because most of our fears are based off of headlines. Yeah. People see it in the headline and they take it as true. And now we take it in your heart. And now you're swayed a certain way. Right. Before right. looking at the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. Great topic. One that comes up often. A brother mentioned to me... Um, we're talking about just political systems. Yeah. And many times you hear the words communism, socialism. Mm -hmm. These things are thrown out in a negative aspect. Sometimes they're thrown in a positive aspect. But they're not put into context. Right. See, 
in a negative context, I have my Cuban brothers who, who are coming mm -hmm. from a communist regime, right. who've seen the negative impacts of it. Right. The, the, the people have seen what socialism can do mm -hmm. when it's not done correctly. Right. And I understand their pain. Mm -hmm. But you also have to understand when people like Marcus Garvey's mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the Malcolm Malcolm X's and, and the Martin Luther King's mm -hmm. use these concepts and talk about communism, right. socialism, Marxism. Yeah. They're not bringing these concepts to destroy America. They're actually bringing these concepts up to bring equality and right. equity to a system right. that has not been equitable to them. Right. See? Right. right. So they're misusing the people. They're playing with the words, mm -hmm. but we're not having these conversations about what the true intent and what the context is. Right. And that's what breaks my heart. Because mm -hmm. we all want freedom. Oh, definitely. You know, we definitely. all want peace. Right. But we got to start talking and quit just jumping to conclusions. And, I, and I, I try to put it in my music, you know, you try mm -hmm. to put it in videos, but I understand it has to really start with the people and working with the people. Right. So back to teaching. That's why I treat every student like my own. Right. To try to break those stereotypes, to break those barriers, because a lot of adults are already, they're fixed in their ways. Mm -hmm. The mind, you know, it's malleable to a certain point. Yes, right. we can learn new things, but we all know about the old dog. Right, right, right. <laughs> my job now I feel most importantly yeah. is to be there for that next generation so they can see how to love, how to listen, right? how to show empathy. Yeah. Because cooperation will always be greater than competition. This is true. This is very true. This is very true. You mentioned something earlier to the listeners, and I know my listeners want to understand what that is or what that's about. Golden apple. Oh, man. The golden apple. I guess it's like it's the lottery of teaching it's the yes. goal is the prize it's, yes you are the teacher of teachers yes. so the competition in short you know you're selected by the community members mm -hmm. students they throw your name in the hat and they usually get up to thousands of applicants right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from that you have to fill out an application and then from the application process they whittle it down to 30 finalists Right. So I've been in this thing forever. Yeah. First year, you know, you get teacher of distinction. That's like top hundred. And then yeah. Next year, you're like, oh, I'm top 30. Here yeah. we go. And yeah. then you don't get it. And then you don't even get nothing. And then next year, you're teacher of distinction again. And then you're golden apple 30 again. I went through the parade six times. Wow. I felt like LeBron James. <laughs> And some people would say, why do you do it? A lot of people don't, yeah. they don't want to do it. Yeah. They feel like it's a charade. Right. To me, I had to do it. Yeah. Again, I did feel like LeBron James. Yeah. I gave up 20K now. This is still in my head to yeah. be the greatest teacher of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and there, there's an award? Right. There's an award in this thing? Yeah. Like, oh, there's a prize? Yeah. Like a competition? I'm a competitive guy. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to compete. Yeah. And really just compete, just be myself, but continually apply for that thing and be myself. Mm -hmm. So I stuck with it. I continually just was myself, stayed involved with kids, stayed involved with the schools, mm -hmm. continually just loved the community. Mm -hmm. And I was blessed to win a golden apple on my seventh try, maybe. There you go. At Ida Baker High School. Beautiful. Another LeBron reference, and I don't even watch basketball anymore. Yeah. But at the time I did, he had to go to Miami. Yeah. To get that championship. And at that same time, I was uh six years into teaching at Fort Myers High. Wow. And I had I think four Golden Apple runs under my belt already. Okay. I went to Ida Baker for another two runs to win the championship. So I was like, I had to I had to, I had to switch teams. You had to switch it up. Switch yeah. teams to win the championship. Yeah, I like that. Man. But I like that. I'm honored. Shout out to the foundation, Lee yes. County Schools. They do so many amazing things for our teachers. It's more yeah. than just the Golden Apple um, Prize. They give out some money to each right. winning teacher, but yes. they give out so many grants. They have the classroom grant. I actually received $500 this year to work on the Solar Go-Kart project, which is going amazing. They awesome. do dancing ballrooms. Mm -hmm. They do teacher immersion programs. They mm -hmm. do a ton for the community. If anyone ever wants to get involved and doesn't know how to get involved with the schools, Hey, contact Marshall Bauer over at the Foundation of Lee County Schools.
He yeah. will get you linked up, man. And there shout out go. to all our community supporters because it takes a community to keep this thing going. Yes. On the inside, it's a bureaucracy. Let's be honest. It's yeah, a yeah. business. But <laughs> yeah. on the outside, yeah. we need that help. You know, yeah. that extra push. Yes, yes. Because we're, yes. they're pinching pennies. Yes, so, so yes. So keep yes. helping this community. That's a beautiful thing right there, man. Um, I'm really excited for a lot of what you're already doing, man. And I, you know, I see, I see what you guys are doing in the teaching world. You and my sister, because I have a sister that won that, that golden apple already. And uh, oh, I yeah. think you, I think you know who I'm talking. Um, <clears throat> but you know, we connected back over at uh, Franklin Park when she was uh, over there doing her thing, and they brought me over with my books and the kids. So. That was really dope. So I'm I'm really proud of to see we're doing it as well. Yes. You know, we're we're out here. Every time I see you or any of my brothers, my sisters from the community in the classroom, yes. It it warms my heart. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Opening up those doors. Yeah. So we can connect. Oh, definitely. Getting out there and <clears throat> using the village to raise the child, man, right. and right. stepping into that uncomfortable space. Oh, definitely. Because it's stuff you didn't really see back in the day. Right. A lot of what we're doing is stuff you haven't seen. Right. It's being more authentic. It's right. being more open. Yes. And people are saying, why? Because that's what's needed that if we want needed. to change. That's right. how we elevate. Right. Let me ask you. You think this change is possible within the next 15 years? 15 years is going to be hard because what we're fighting is something crazy, right? Yeah. So in one direction, we have a lot of enlightenment, right? Just the evolution of thought right. is inevitable. Mm -hmm. We're growing. We're expanding mm -hmm. uh, just through proximity by bringing us together. Right. It's forcing us to, to see beyond. Yeah. What our eyes are telling us, right? right. So we're moving, we're expanding, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we have to fight technology. Yes. So, so I'm really, I don't know. I'm uncertain about the next 15 years right. because I see the direction the kids are going. Right. I, I have three of my own. I teach it and I see the effects yeah. <laughs> of the screens. I see what's happening. So I'm like, wow, are we, I'll be honest. Yeah. I see minds going in two different directions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see this split happening, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know what's going to happen. Right, right. <laughs> That's a good way to put yeah. that. That's a good way to put that. The, the paradigm shift we're in right now, the clash of all these different gens, you know, coming from the baby boomers to now the Gen Z, mm -hmm. and in between, millennial and all. Who's handling this paradigm shift the best? I think. Oh, come on. I'm biased. My generation's handling. Oh, come on now. I'm handling it the best. You know, this is this is this is my thing. Yeah. Right? Uh yeah. I understand it because this is my thing, right? Right. My, before me, before, baby boomers, it's outpacing them. Right. It's outpacing them right now. Yeah. Uh, we we still have to help them with the phone, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, baby boomers, but you know, you, <laughs> hey, how do you how do you send this message, right? Right, right. We're us. We're still keeping up. Don't get me wrong; it's moving fast. Right. But we're still keeping up. I'm saying we're in a good spot. Yeah. Because we're not too far gone. Right, right. I wasn't raised with the screen. I know what life was before the screen. Right, 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 right. I yeah. know what it was like before that. Yeah. So I can still step outside. And enjoy a peaceful day. Yeah. I don't know what it's like when you wake up and the first thing you see is the feed and it's going and you're trying to keep up and it's right. all day consistency like this next generation where it's all day. All day. And it's Snapchat, all constant information. Yeah. I don't know how they pull away from that. Right. They will navigate it. They have no choice. Oh, they have God, to. Hey, yeah. it's, it's just, we're going to deal with it. Right. But the shift, you said how they deal with it. It's going to be hard for them to pull themselves out. Yeah. Yeah. Those who, it's like any addiction. And the, and the earlier it starts, the harder it is to reverse. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And the deeper the effects. So God help us uh, parents, man. Keep working with your kids. Keep fighting. I'm fighting every day. Yeah. I feel it's important 
Let them be bored, man. Yeah. That's a conversation we can have. Let yeah. them be bored. Let them be bored. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay Save to do their that. minds. Yeah. Because I see what that radiation is. And I don't know if we're teaching as much to the kids on the danger of all that radiation. Because it's a lot of radiation that comes from that. Phone. Oh, yeah. There's so much. And then back to the paradigm. We can go back to the paradigm. Oh, definitely. Let's, definitely. let's stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because times are changing. Mm-hmm. Like, who screwed up? When you talk about a paradigm, <laughs> right, right. It, it's really talking about something that's transitional. Something mm-hmm. is flipped. Mm-hmm. So, and we're talking about time. Right. So I get this. Who screwed up? Mm-hmm. And who can fix it? So I feel like I started off already misconstrued. I, I started off with this messed up picture. Right. I feel like my mom may have the clearest picture of all. Right. Right. However, she can't keep up technologically. Right. <laughs> right. 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 But she right. has the clearest picture of all. Mm-hmm. She saw it. Yeah. I was put into this beautiful picture of, hey, kumbaya, let's be real. I grew up in kumbaya. I did not see the hard times that I've read about in the books. I didn't live through the Depression. I didn't live through civil rights. Right. You know, I grew up through the 80s. Mm-hmm. And now things are coming full circle, and I'm trying to have to figure out how to navigate this. Mm-hmm. I really, how am I handling that? I really can't tell you how I'm handling it until you look at to see how my kids turn out, right? Right, right. That's right. true. That's so, true. It's a journey. Because yeah. we're handling it the best way we can. Right. And how are they handling it? Well, we don't know until, I guess, their kids. Yeah. So I think we're all just socially yeah. in this twisted spot mm-hmm. where we have to continually just talk generationally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we can help each other. Right, right. Through this shift. Yeah. yeah right? Because yeah. we all have this different time frame, this different reference of what the world truly is. Mm-hmm. So we need to connect with our elders right. right now before we lose them. Right now. Right. To get those stories of what their reality was. So we can then process that into our hearts and teach that to our children mm-hmm. before we lose the truth. I'm glad you're touching in that. Because as you can see, what they're trying to do now Mm -hmm. is erase history. Erase the history. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they don't want this generation to know what that looks like or what that was? Come on, man. It all starts with history. Yeah. Who you are starts with your story. Right. Your story has a beginning. Mm Mm-hmm. We have individuals, many individuals on this planet, who believe that your story takes away from their story. story. (laughs) Oh, my God. And I don't understand why it's like this. Mm -hmm. Why why the Egyptian story takes away from the Greek story or or the English story takes away from the French story. Right. or, Or the African story takes away from... Everyone has a story. Oh, definitely. And everyone has the right for their story to be told. Right. Now, if there's some skeletons in that closet, let there be skeletons in that closet, but we're going to tell that story. You got to tell that story. You tell that story. And to disallow me, because I feel like my story in this country of America has been muffled, has Mm -hmm. been uh, silenced, Mm -hmm. has been put away, has been discredited. That ain't right. Right. And I'm glad I'm here today to say that. Yeah. You know, because a lot of we don't have a platform to say that. Right. And it's true. And to talk about the dark past of America is just fact. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong right. with fact. Right. It's part of my story. Mm-hmm. I'm owning it. Yes. My grandmother's grandparents were slaves. Right. Right. I now own a house in Cape Coral. Right. I have a college degree. I'm teaching the community. I think we're doing pretty good. But I take pride in the fact of where we started and where we are today. Right. I also, because I'm fired up now, yeah. deep in my heart, <laughs> I just want some recognition. Yeah. Yeah. To the people. Yes. The people 
the millions, more than just a museum, right? but an official recognition mm -hmm. of the people who built this country. Right. We put the, the president's faces on mountains. Right. We learn all 50 of them. We go through all, we go through U.S. history classes. Mm -hmm. But we still never give proper credit to those who were enslaved. Right. Who worked the fields. Mm -hmm. Who worked those mines. Who gathered all the resources. Right. For this country to be prosperous today. Yeah. Who fought in those wars. My right. grandfather fought in a segregated army. Oh, my, my dad fought in Vietnam. Right. Where he had to watch his back on both sides. Right. Didn't know the man, but I learned that story later in life. Yeah. My brother fought. So this is my country too. Oh, definitely. Definitely. My history has to be told. Right. Why would it not be told? Because angst in someone's heart. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Anyone who does not want to tell that story has angst in their heart. Mm -hmm. And we have politicians now who, who play on it and they twist it yeah. and make it sound like my story's taken from you. Right. When it's not. Right. I like that. I like that. And, uh, you know, I think listeners need to hear that and understand that fully. I'm, a, I'm as American as the next, if not. And right. there used to be a time where I didn't feel American, like it wasn't for me. Right. But then I had to reflect on my history. It wasn't when I met my grandmother for the first time. Right. She's 96. Bless her heart. Yes. Eddie Caldwell. She's living with my cousin Reggie Drew up in Virginia. Never mm -hmm. met my father, but after I found out he died, I went to his grave site, connected with the family I never knew. That's a whole other story. Yeah. But when I got that piece of that history... That really fired me up, man, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to know where I'm from. Right. And that's something else we need to do. We yeah. need to embody our story. We can't run from it. Right. Just because we've been made to feel like we don't belong here. Right. We need to go back to the story where we do belong here. Yeah. Simple things. Yeah. Like being country. Right. African Americans, like, and I don't even know what African American, black people, Negro, whatever you want to call it. Like, we country as ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we try to act sophisticated, but we country, we everything, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Get out of that box. Right. But we wouldn't know that until you talk to your elders. This is true. To this get back true. to what, everything we've done, back right. to the roots. And I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, we got to have these conversations. Yes. Because if they're not going to teach our history in school, we'll have to teach it at home, which we should have been doing a long time ago. Right. But right. now that we know the importance... Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And and you saying that parents need to be aware of their responsibility on doing that. Oh, you, you cannot expect the school to empower your child. It's not going to do that. Right. The first thing the school is going to do is point out your child's weakness. Right. That's what school's going to do. So you're weak in your math, you're weak in, in your reading. Yeah. And, and then off you go to, to just filling in deficiencies. Right, right. A kid may never find his strength ever until he gets out of school, which right. happens a lot of times. Right. So it is so important that we nurture, continually nurture, and give our kids that foundational building block of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this funny word, self-esteem. Self-esteem. They put the word self but yeah. you don't cultivate it by yourself. Right, like, right. The only, <laughs> only self part of it is that it's stuck in you. It's stuck. It's yours. Right. But it comes from the interaction with other people. Mm -hmm. As a child, if you never see yourself win, how can you think it's possible? Right. And that's where a lot of children who look like me are at. Right. They've never seen themselves win. Right. They haven't won in that history book. They're not having one in the math class, you know, and yeah. all they want to show them is, well, Steph Curry, he's winning. Right. Why do you think so many people, brothers, gravitate towards that? Right. Because those are the winners they see. Right. Those are the only winners that society's showing them. Right. Got to show some of the other winners. We got to show other winners, yes. other victories. Yes. And yes. that's why our history is so important. Give yeah, all the kids a chance. Yeah, man. In my classroom, they all come from greatness. We talk in engineering, I tell them, you all come from greatness. Hey, Africans, you had pyramids, you know? <laughs> you were in China, you got the, the 
Great Wall of China. Right. Oh, you're in Europe. You guys got Stonehenge. Yeah. Oh, you in South America. Y'all had ziggurats too. What's right. a ziggurat, Mr. Drew? That's a pyramid too. Right. Like, come on now, Taj Mahal. Oh, we can yeah. keep going. Oh, yeah. We all oh, yeah. come from greatness. My job as a teacher is to remind that kid. Yes. Whatever his background is. If I can do that, I expect my colleagues to do the same. Right. Right. With you just touching on the pyramid stuff, and, and a lot of individuals are still in a complex place of understanding all that that was just it was put together and they can't really fully figure out how that even happened. You think we're at a lesser percentage of the mind usage or understanding than back in that time when that was created. I think the percentage is the same. I think Ooh, the percentage is the same. Yeah. I think it's the same. Yeah. There's more people. Right. But percentage wise, yeah. I, just my guess. Yeah. I think it's about the same. Yeah. I don't know what would change that. Right. I say this to say, even in the past, I don't think there was any civilization where everybody was woo right. all enlightened. Right. Everyone because we know only yeah. a few were sent to schools. Right. We right. know that the Greeks learned from the Egyptians. Right. We we know Pythagoras was sent to Egypt to the right. to the mystery schools as they call it. Right. right. Where he learned yeah. geometry. Right. Right. So we we're sending a select few to learn these things. The question is, does everybody have the ability to learn it? Right. That is a hard one to answer. That's a question right there. Because our intellectual abilities are different. Our right. gifts are different. Mm -hmm. But percentage-wise, we've always had the, these builders, right. builders of society, builders of grand ideas. You know, when I think about it, I don't even think it's the mind more as opposed to the heart to actually do it. Ooh, that's it right there. This is it. Because that, like... You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your heart, bro. That's it, man. That is it. To stick with it and be committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we all have ideas. Oh, definitely. definitely. We all have ideas. Definitely. But to go out and actually move forward right. and to grow, yeah. oh, my goodness, brother. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, man. And all those books. Still oh, working definitely. on my first one. Yeah. You're like on <laughs> book like 35. Yeah. Man, I love you, man. That's amazing. <laughs> It is amazing, man. And listen, we, we're all doing it, man. We're all doing it, and we're doing some major things. And listen, you guys are welcome. You guys are welcome. I brought you a wealth of knowledge here. That is just putting you on game in so many different... <sighs> I hope. I hope, man. You know me, I'm just ran. Yeah. I keep it... Really, I'm basic. I was telling you, I'm basic on the I'm basic on the outside, man. I don't have a lot of there's no jewelry, there's no tattoos, there's no yeah. clothes or whatever. My car is it's a 2007 Accord. It's 20 years old. Are you chilling? Yeah. I'm basic on the outside, but but I'm I trying to take my mind. You know, going to another oh, yeah. level. Oh yeah, man. I try I to stay it. on that other level. I, I love it, man. It's it's beautiful. Now, as we come towards the end of the show, and I know you guys are craving for more, but don't worry. We're going to bring Mr. Drew back. We got you. We got you. We got you. There's a, there's a few other things that we're brewing over here. And, I, you know, I feel Mr. Drew could definitely be on the show to kind of shed his insights on a lot of what that looked like. But how can individuals find you if they want to? Oh, never, never hard to find, you know. Always have an online presence. Okay. So Mark Drew Speaks, it's the moniker, right? Mm -hmm. Mark Drew Speaks on Instagram. Mark Drew on Facebook. Mark Drew speaks on Facebook. Keep it. I keep it public. I'm yeah. a public figure. Yes. Um, the wife doesn't like it all the time. Right. So, so I, I she try needs to control, you for herself sometimes. I, I control. Try yeah. to monitor my content. That's why I'm not posting as much. Right. But I have the YouTube. Yes. You know. Drewprints.com. Okay. We have the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for architectural design. You yes. know, entrepreneur on the side. Mm -hmm. Drewprince.com forward slash Mark Drew Speaks. Yes. <laughs> you know, so we have places. I'm there. I'm a short Google away. Yes. I like From that. anyone who needs to find me. I like that. I like that. That is beautiful, my brother. And I got to tell you, man, I, I'm grateful that you came on the show today because we've been trying to get you. 
We've been trying to get him, but, you know, he's a busy man, people. He's in the school and, you know, but we made it happen. We made it happen. so today. good to actually come out of my house. Man. I'm telling I you. I saw man. the light of day today. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk with you, my man. Oh, man. This is amazing, man. So listen, guys. There you have it. Another tale was created right here at EAS Club. So until our next episode, where we have another intriguing guest, decorative guest, right here to tell their tale. Thank you. Peace. Well, there you have it. The host came. The guest came. And the story was created. Thank you to our sponsors, EHAS Inc., Karis Capital, and the Cornell Bunting LLC brand. Go check out the books, courses, and materials at www.cornellbunting.com. Thank you again for listening to the show. Check back again to hear another tale from another unique guest right here at EHAS Club.